All right, so we've got this Foxit crack that we've downloaded from Intorrent. And similarly, we've got cracks for AutoCAD, JetBrains, and other popular software. Because guess what? Say you're a student, you need that software for that one project. You ain't paying $200 for that one project. So you just run the crack, the patch, whatever came with your torrent, and you hope it gives you access to the full version so you can get your job done. So you try to patch the binary, and ooh, it needs administrator permission. But that makes sense, right? So you just click yes and it seems to be done. But what you don't realize is this was an exploit that's going to now hook into system drivers and it's going to steal your credit card information, your password saved, and any cryptocurrency you might have. Because if we open up VarsTotal and check our patch over here, you can see this is an agent of SteelFox, which is one of those malware families that uses vulnerable drivers to get privileges on your system and then permanently set itself up, connect to its command and control servers. Now using a vulnerable driver has been common for state-sponsored attacks and ransomware groups, but this is now getting into info stealers as well. And it's starting to show up in more and more of these torrent software packages. In the security community, they like to call this BYOD or bring your own vulnerable driver. So what are you supposed to do? And that's the tricky part, because while it's easy to look at this and say, hey, it's detected on Vars Total. So are a lot of cracks that may not be info stealers or crypto miners. And this is where a little bit of malware analysis comes in handy. And it is worth reading the detections for this. Some specific vendors, they're usually quite accurate with the names, because for example, Bitdefender just says Trojan agent something. McAfee gives you a random list of characters, which I'm sure is very helpful. But if you look at Kaspersky, it says Trojan Win64 Steel Fox. And you can always look at a detection like this and then Google it to see what it might be. And there, right there, you have the original research article and there's detailed documentation about it. So before you go ahead and run any kind of crack, make sure you do your research. Again, I don't recommend piracy on this channel, but you know who you are. If you do this sort of thing, be super extra careful because these things are popping up in things like torrents. And you might say, well, I use this one trusted pirate. <laughs> that itself sounds funny, trusted pirate, kind of like an oxymoron. You don't really know the identity of these people or what their end game is. Sure, they might be well-meaning folks who want to help the poor, or they could be nefarious cyber criminals, and there's no way for you to know. So make sure you're extra careful if you're downloading from an unknown source. Another good thing um, to look at, obviously, is going to be the behavior section in Vars Total. So any kind of IP traffic is very sketchy. So if you see a lot of connections being made, try to verify what these connections are. Also, it's really worth looking at the graphs. So if we open it up in the threat graph, you can see what this file is connected to. And here it immediately shows up a lot of articles relating to it, a lot of dropped files and malicious URL. And typically, if this is not malware, if it's simply illegal software, and that's why it's being detected by AV vendors, you're not going to see all this research on it as a malware variant. It's not going to line up with those. And it's also not going to have embedded malicious URLs like the one here. Now, in terms of what the software does, info sealers are probably one of the scariest form of malware that can have real impact on your life because they can steal your cookies, your credit cards, location, and search history. Especially these days, so much of your information is stored on your system. And as we all know, Windows does not have a great track record of privacy. <laughs> the information it keeps on your system is questionable at best. And this is only going to get worse with things like Microsoft Recall being rolled out where everything you open on your system is stored in a database somewhere so you can look it up. I mean, who asked? for that feature, Microsoft. I don't think anybody did. But one of the things about this malware is the command and control server is hard coded. So eventually, hopefully this is going to be taken down, but there are going to be more malware. And um, it seems it's a full feature crimeware bundle. So other hackers are going to use different variants of it. So definitely do your research before you run any kind of crack patch torn software, because the cost of messing up and getting a malware on your system is very very high. It's not as simple as, oh crap, I just got my computer infected, let me reinstall Windows. If they have your data, there's no going back. 
So I hope this video helps. Please like and share it. Also want to thank Kaspersky for supporting some of our educational content, including this video. Their security team does a lot of great research in uncovering the latest malware. And also regular viewers of channel know they have a very good track record when it comes to actual tests that we do, independent tests where we compare products in terms of their ability to prevent intrusions, block ransomware, things like that. Now, all of those components aside, Kaspersky Premium, their security package for home users, has a lot of really interesting components that have been added. So if you haven't looked at this in a while, it's a good time to check it out. They recently added things like stalkerware detection and violation control that can find and detect legitimate apps that can be used to spy on you. Because these days, a lot of hackers don't use traditional malware. They will simply use a Microsoft tool and avoid detection in that way. And it's just a wide ranging set of tools. They've even got, you know, ad blocking capabilities with anti-banner. You've got the home Wi-Fi monitoring so you can see if any suspicious devices are connecting to your home network or if your neighbor's stealing your Wi-Fi. You'll be surprised by the amount of stuff in this package. You can even look for duplicates, a lot of small tools that you might need. And it's just got all of that in one place beyond obviously the really good security components that always had like System Watcher. They're just great at blocking zero day ransomware and such. You can try it out for free using a link in description. And of course, thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.